Hi and welcome to Velo GPS. In this quick start guide we're going to show you how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge 820. So in order to do so you need to select the icon in the bottom left here. And then from the menu that appears we select settings and then activity profiles and we choose the profile that we wish to modify. So in this instance we're going to select train and then we select data screens. So we can see now that we have up to five data screens that we can modify. One of them's turned on and the other four are turned off. And then we've got some further options uh, lower down which we'll come on to uh, towards the end of the video. So to start with, we're just going to select screen number one. And within screen number one, we can modify the number of data fields that we have displayed uh, from anywhere as few as one all the way up to 10 data fields. Now we tend to find that 10 data fields gets a little bit cluttered. It's a little bit more difficult to pick out the data you want from the screen. Um, and we prefer an optimum of around about seven data fields, which gives you three larger data fields at the top and then four smaller ones at the bottom. So once you're happy with the number that you have displayed, you then select the tick item at the bottom. And then we can change the individual data fields by just tapping on them. And this brings up the data fields categories. So we've got cadence, calories, courses, etc. And I think we just want to select speed. So if we scroll down, we can either do that with the arrow or by just dragging the screen up or down. So we want to find speed. And then we're going to enter just a basic speed data field. There we go. So we can see that's now updated to speed. We're happy with average speed in the second one, but we're going to change calories here. We normally have distance displayed. So again, there's a distance category. You select that. And you'll forgive me, I'm not quite getting my finger square on the screen. So distance, and then we select distance again. And again, that data field's updated. And it's exactly the same for the smaller data fields at the bottom. So at the moment, we've got calories displayed here. Uh, we tend to prefer to have... Um, temperature displayed there which is under the general settings and if we scroll down we'll find temperature at the bottom. So once we're happy that we've updated all of the data fields to the parameters that we want to view we just select the tick icon at the bottom and that is screen number one set up. So if we move on we can set up anywhere up to five screens as I mentioned each with 10 data fields displayed so more than 50 data fields uh, if you really want that much information so more than enough for most people but we're going to set up screen number two with just some basic DI2 information for those of you that might have fancy electronic gearing. So in order to enable the screen you just tap on the little slider at the top and you'll just see that it's turned green there. We're happy with three fields displayed but we're just going to adjust what we've got at the moment. So we're going to look for the gear options. So within gears, uh, we're just going to display the front gear so we can see which of the two chain rings we're in. And then if we tap on the second data field, we're going to update that, that to rear gears. So again, gears, if we scroll to the bottom, we've got rear gear as an option there. We just need to select it. And then just finally down the bottom, we're going to choose, again, within the gear options, uh, the DI2 battery level, just to let us know whether we're running out of battery. And then when we're happy with those, we just, again, select the tick at the bottom. So we're going to have two data screens displayed, but if we scroll down, we can do that again with the arrows or by hand. Uh, you'll notice here that we have a map screen, which we can choose to turn on or off with the slider at the top. We've got it turned on and then you can choose the number of data fields you want displayed at the bottom of that screen. So you can either have none or our preferred option is to have two so that when you're on the map screen you can just have a little bit of information displayed at the bottom. We've got speed and distance to next displayed and again it's just exactly the same process. You just tap on the data field and then it brings up the categories and you can uh, update that data field from there if you so wish. We've got distance to next as another field here. So if you've uploaded a course from Garmin Connect or another third party uh, mapping tool, this just tells you the distance to the next junction um, um, or similar. So we're going to just come back from that screen. We're happy enough with that. It's turned on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we can choose to turn the compass screen on or off. So the compass screen is fairly self-explanatory. 
the elevation screen is quite a handy screen if you're uh, undertaking rides with a particularly hilly route or whatever you'll basically get a plot of distance against elevation so you can see a nice little graph um, of the route approaching you and so if you're making a climb you can see yourself uh, part way through that climb how much more of the climb you've got to go so that you don't overcook it and again you can choose the data fields that are displayed at the bottom there and then finally the other one that we will show you is the virtual partner so virtual partner we have turned on and this enables you to race against a on-screen virtual partner with a preset speed so if we just have a quick click on that you can see that we turn it on or off we've got it turned on uh, other data fields or rather data screens here include things like light network if you've got Garmin Varia uh, lights that can communicate with your 820 so once you're happy we're going to come all the way back to the main screen and from the main screen we're just going to take a look at what that would look like uh, in reality if you're undertaking a ride so here's our main uh, seven data field screen number one and just a quick little tip whilst we've gone through that process of setting up each of the individual screens if you want to change a data field on the fly whilst you're out undertaking a ride there is a another route you can use so you just literally just tap and hold on that data field and you'll see it highlight and then when you release it takes you back into the data field categories so we're just going to change temperature there we're going to think that it, well, it might be getting uh, late on into the evening and you're just wondering what time sunset is within the general data fields that is an option so we're just going to click on sunset and that's telling us that at 8.56 we're going to lose light so we'd better get a move on okay so um, from here you can then scroll to the additional pages so if we're undertaking a ride to change pages it is just a simple case of swiping across the screen so we've swiped across to screen number two there so we can see our di2 information with front gears rear gears and battery level we take another swipe across and this is our map screen again with the data fields and it's exactly the same if you want to update on the fly at the bottom there you just push and hold and it takes you into the data field categories we take another swipe and this is what virtual partner looks like so here we've set the virtual partner to ride at a pace of 16 mile an hour you can use uh, a virtual partner based on previous rides um, and equally we've got here uh, a display of the distance ahead or behind that you are compared to your virtual partner so if we're ahead it says ahead if we go behind it updates uh, and says behind and then finally we sweep across again to the elevation page this is where I mentioned that you would have a graph if you've uploaded a course showing you where the climbs and descents are and where you are in relation to those so if we take a last swipe across we go back to our screen number one uh, and in a few short minutes that's how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge 820 uh, if you want to check out uh, our subsequent videos be sure to subscribe because we'll be featuring the 820 and in particular uh, a demonstration of the course mapping Thank you.